I know it's not Monday, but I just have to do this. I saw what it is. I'm pretty sure what it is. And this, in my mind, deserves its own video. This is microphone. You may remember that I've got uh, some cheap microphones in the past to try and uh, upgrade the sound that I'm getting when I'm recording on the computer. This is a continuation of that little quest. Uh, so the, the microphone that I'm using right now is really cheap. This one is an actual studio style quality, hopefully quality, condenser microphone. Looks professional. That's actually a, a broadcast console. Hmm. Open from here. Actually, first, let's go and check the listing quickly. BM800 3.5 millimeter audio studio condenser sponge microphone mic high output shock mount. Got this one from Dome Cool for $19.18. And no, I didn't pay shipping. It was free shipping. You can actually find them for cheaper if you're patient and on auction, but I just wanted to get it. So, there's what it says it looks like. Um, what's important? Maximum 130 dB. I'm not going to be screaming like Axl Rose. Uh, sensitivity, NIG 34 dB plus or minus 2. That's not bad. Unidirectional, good. 150 ohm impedance, whatever. That's pretty standard. Frequency response, 20 to 20. Thousand. Everybody claims that on their microphones. Um, noise level 16 dBA, which is fairly low. Signal to noise 78 dB. Reasonable. One important thing to note, being a condenser mic, it requires power. It requires voltage. Dynamic microphones are just passive devices, but these require a bit of voltage, and I'll explain a bit more about that later. Cannot be used with a mobile phone and tablet computer. Yeah, no kidding. It's not for that at all. So you see, I didn't break the bank on this thing because that's just the way I do things. Um, but I'm hoping, based on reviews and stuff that I've seen, that it's relatively good quality. In the box, we have one squashed foam windsock. One microphone shock mount. I'll show you how that goes together in a bit. You have one cable with an XLR connector on one end, a cheesy Canon knockoff, and three and a half millimeter. Okay. And we have the microphone itself and some instructions that are in oh, English and Chinese. Excellent back to that but the star of the show is the microphone da, da, da. Ooh, look at that shiny okay we don't need the box anymore so what can we say about this thing xlr connector is all proper professional microphones should have uh, matte black finish down there and gold mesh distracting gold mesh i'm just trying to see so this thing is unidirectional you address it from one side only not like this from like this and either from this side or this side and i'm not sure which one because there's no markings or anything let's see what's in here this is just a retaining ring down at the bottom That comes off. And that is why we needed power to it. Specifically, we'll be getting phantom power. Phantom power comes down the cable on the same pins as the audio. Um, if I can find one, I'll put up a graphic here. But basically, phantom power is 40 volts, which one side of the 40 volts, the positive side, is on the two pins that the audio is on and the negative side 
is on the ground pin or the shield pin, which is pin one. That way the, uh, the power is the same on both audio pins and theoretically doesn't cause any extra noise on there. And you can safely plug a non-condenser mic into it without it blowing up. So what do we have on the little board here? Okay, looks like we have four little tiny surface mount transistors and then one larger one up there. Although these guys are labeled VE3 and 4. That one's VE2, that one's Q2, that one's Q1. And then there's some pads labeled VE1 up there, but there's nothing on them. Okay, um, the inputs down at the bottom on the board are unexpectedly labeled five, plus five volts output and ground. The ground goes to pin one of the XLR connector, which is the ground by standard. And the other two, uh, the output goes to pin three, which is the middle pin, right? And then the one labeled plus five volts goes to pin two which is a little bit odd, but we'll just go with it. And then the microphone capsule itself comes in up there. A couple of fairly large capacitors on the back here. We have 47 microfarad and what are you? 22 microfarad. Okay. I don't know whether I want to take it apart. You can take it apart with a couple of screws there. Actually, yeah, we're in this far, why not? Care if we take that off. Okay, so there is the capsule. So this, as I mentioned, is a condenser microphone, which is basically a capacitor. There's two plates held a small distance apart and they're electrically charged as capacitors are. One plate is mechanically fixed in place. The other one is allowed to vibrate with the incoming air, you know, the hot air from me. Uh, so that varying capacitance is what is uh, detected by this little circuit in here, turned into a varying voltage and shoved out the connector out towards your recording equipment. But the reason that I wanted to go inside here was to see which side was the front face of the microphone, which is this side. And now that I know that, that is at the same point as the locking tab on the XLR connector. So that is the side to talk to. I'm going to quickly put it back together and uh, we'll see if it works. The other thing I want to check is this cable before I use it. And actually, I wasn't really planning on using that cable anyway. I just want to see how they've wired this. So, normally I would expect that to be the ground. And it is, that's pin 1. So pin 2 is the ring. And also the tip. No difference in resistance. Okay. Pin three. So normally pin two and three are the balanced audio pair. Not on the tip, not on the ring, on the sleeve. What? Yeah. Pin one and... So they've got one side of the audio pair grounded. And then two just being unbalanced audio to both of there and there. Probably not going to use it with that. But that means, of course, that I have to get myself another cable. I'll, I'll do that in a minute. The windsock, it's just, its purpose is to just reduce the uh, literal wind noise, uh, blowing noise, or if you're outdoors, actual wind. And I'm sure you've heard news reporters trying to interview somebody and it just sounds like <laughs> because of the wind. That's what this guy's job is to prevent. Also, I mean, it'll keep spit and stuff like that off it. So I'll probably put it on. 
a proper one made of proper foam should be fairly close to acoustically transparent anyway. It's not going to color your sound. So I think I'll leave it on. Then this guy, the shock mount, it has two concentric rings, one that grabs onto the microphone, one that is mounted onto the stand mount. Oh, they've included both threads too. That's nice. This is the, the more standard North American uh, mic stand thread, which is, uh, I think it's 5 8 27 threads to the inch. A yeah, nice standard thing. This one, um, I can't remember because it's not used that often in North America, that inside thread. I kind of think it's quarter inch, but I'm not sure. So this guy just literally slips in there and those little elastic mounts kind of hold it. Now then I got to keep track of there's the side to talk into over here. You can see with the locking tab. So that just goes in like that and it's got enough grip to hold it like that. But these two concentric rings are connected by, it's essentially the same as hair elastics and it's just suspended in there. So if you, if there's vibrations in your floor um, or people walking by, this thing can just vibrate a little bit in there and not have those mechanically transmitted to it. It's pretty slick. To connect this to my computer, because normal computers don't have an XLR audio connection. I went down to my local pawn shop a while ago, actually, sometime between when I ordered this and when I actually got it. And I picked up this little M-Audio interface. They had it on for 39 bucks. I managed to talk them down to, uh, to 25, I think it was, something like that. So that's reasonable. Um, it is basically a small, small microphone mixer. It's got a uh, phantom power supply. Where is it? There it is. 48 volts built in. Um, you can either connect a guitar input or a line input from something like a keyboard or a microphone. Um, the microphone will have microphone preamps because a microphone tends to be in the neg 50 ish DBM range for its electrical signal, a, a dynamic microphone anyway. Uh, condensers are a little bit hotter because of the circuitry we saw in there. A line input is, well, for audio or for uh, pro audio gears, anywhere from 0 dB to neg 10 dBm, thereabouts, kind of, sort of. Um, the insert allows you to fit to patch in uh, an effects box. Uh, if you've got a guitar, you put a pedal in there or whatever. It's, it's a stereo quarter inch jack but it's not wired in stereo it's wired that one of the connections is the input and one is the output fairly standard in pro audio gear uh, and then we have a gain control a i.e volume um, we have a main level which i assume, i don't know whether that's output or input um, then we have headphones we make, listen to the headphones either in mono or stereo you can mix what you're hearing on the headphones between the direct output from here and what's coming from the USB connection from your computer. So you can play back and record simultaneously. Um, for my application, not that important, but if you're recording music, that's really handy. You can uh, play your instruments, uh, have them mixed on your computer, then play it back and simultaneously record your vocals. And you, that's what that is. Uh, and yeah, two channels. It also has a main left and right analog output. And just for funsies, it's got a MIDI in and out uh, for keyboards and related stuff. So this guy connects up to the computer just like that. Boom. There is no step two. Now you can see, I think, there is a really dim USB light on there. So, uh, over at the computer, this should be showing up now as a sound card, essentially. I need a cable.
Now that I've got a cable, I can hook everything up here. Okay, now that I got it all hooked up, um, I can, I've got it set to 48 volt phantom on. I've got it set to mic mode, mean level up just cause, I think that's just the outputs there anyway. So I can turn up the gain. Let's turn it to about half and bring the microphone in. One, two, hello, one, two. Wow, that's pretty peaky. One, two, there we go. Let's go over to the computer and see how that sounds. Okay, here I am speaking into the brand new condenser microphone. I've got my mouth about 15 centimeters away, which is a comfortable speaking distance. And I'm just speaking straight towards the microphone. One, two, three, four. Am <clears throat> radio mode. One, two, three, four. Testing. One, two, three, four. Just for comparison, I'm going to bring in a few of the other microphones. This one up here is actually the one that I normally use most of the time when I'm doing the computer part of the mailbags and whatnot. It is just a little microphone that came with my very first computer, a 286 for those old enough to remember those, back when microphones came bundled with computers. And it's just connected in through a... Uh, uh, sort of a homebrew kind of a modified sound card. I've also used this one in the past. Um, I got this in a mailbag probably half a year ago. It's a headset mic. Uh, goes over your ears and around the back of your head like that. And then there's this out in front. It sounds to me a little bit thin. I'm going to show or preview all of these for you anyway. I've also got this rock band mic which i got at a garage sale for i think five bucks and actually it's because the sound card on this workshop computer of mine is completely toast uh, or it's not a sound card it's the motherboard sound input i am actually using the sound card part of this thing which is this guy here which is actually an audio converter made by logitech it's not horrible uh, I'm using that as my main sound card right now for recording. And the microphone that I showed you uh, a few minutes, or the, the, the microphone that I normally use is connected through that. And one other special, since I've got this now, I'm also going to try the oldest microphone that I own. Can't even get it all in the picture. Yes, this is in fact a vintage Shure Model 55, aka the Elvis mic. This particular example I got from a surplus, no, uh, secondhand store that had got it from a church who had bought it new back in what, the 1950s, I think. It Quite honestly, it doesn't sound all that great. I think the magnets in it have pretty much lost their uh, their charge. But we'll, uh, we'll give this guy a shot as well, just for the fun of it. Okay, this is my normal microphone, the one that I usually use for, uh, for mailbags. And as you can see, it sounds fairly similar to my phone, actually, which isn't that bad. Again, this is at a normal speaking level, um, normal 10 to 15 centimeters away from the microphone. This is the cheap eBay headset microphone, one, two, three. Obviously being a headset, the, uh, the microphone is a couple of centimeters away from my mouth. And again, just speaking at a normal level, one, two, three. And this is the rock band microphone, one, two, three. Again, I've got this about 10 centimeters away from my mouth. If I get in closer to rock star mode, one, two, three, it actually starts clipping, which is not good. One, two, back to normal space, one, two, three. And just for fun, this is the vintage Shure microphone. I've got gain cranked up as high as I can get it on the audio interface, and it's... And again, about two centimeters away from my mouth. One, two, three. Hello. One, two, three. 
And just for completeness, here is the new condenser microphone again. Hello, one, two, three, four. So there's what my new setup looks like. I've got a mic stand that I've had for eons left over from a previous job. Uh, got the microphone mounted just there. My computer just off to the side. The M-Audio interface down there. I can all reach it when I'm in front of the microphone. I just have to back up a little bit to get it all in the picture. And should I ever need it, my old standby is still there. So I think that was overall a worthwhile 20 bucks spent. I'm pretty sure that's improving my sound. Um, I don't know whether it's improving it enough for it to matter to most of you guys. I don't know. What do you think? You heard all the different microphones, especially the one that I have been using the most and the new one. I don't know. What do you think? Um, is it, uh, is it worth the effort? Should I go into the voiceover business now with, uh, with my newfound technology? Whatever you got to think, got to say about it. Uh, let's, uh, chat down in the comments, shall we? Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you later. Cheers.